what's good you guys today we're gonna be talking about something really juicy and that's gonna be enneagram and mental health don't get a panic attack okay so we know that naranjo kind of did that right he outlined different conditions personality disorders and he correlated them to a specific enneagram that's what the book character in the roses is about so that's not news now guys remember that predispositions are very important so if you're a very aggressive person by nature you're very hostile you're very dominant you're very domineering you're very impulsive you're not going to be a person who's going to be schizoid right you're not going to have schizoid personality disorder because that's literally there's zero overlap there's zero overlap think of those personality disorders or those conditions as an extreme manifestation of certain neurosis, right? Certain personality taken to its extreme. Enneagram 1, and here would be obsessive compulsive personality disorder. I'm going to name some of those characteristics for you. The first would be perfectionism that interferes with task completion. So basically, circle jerk into the maximum degree. Occupied with details, rules, lists, order, and organization. So a very rigid character makes sense unwilling to compromise okay very self-righteous black and white thinking over focus on flaws on other in other people so basically hypercriticality then we have difficulty working with other people insisting that the things should be done the way they believe very formal stiff and rigid in mannerisms so basically restricted effect lastly excessive devotion to work this is not a diagnostic criteria those are simply personality traits that this individual manifests what kind of resentment and failure to meet their perfectionistic standards right okay vehement righteous indignation largely unexpressed hatefulness so here we see that there's a lot of the anger and focus on that perfectionistic standards when they're not met there is a lot of circle jerking and coping going on which fits ocpd fault finding making other people feel guilty moral reproach accusation of imperfection demandingness is another characteristic inhibition of spontaneity exacting hard work and excellence so this is a person who will basically eliminate pleasure and eliminate kind of spontaneity from their life there is nothing like that in them very hard working and always striving for perfection orientation towards law and order interest in principles ideals and being very harshly self-critical over control which manifests as difficulty functioning in a very unstructured environment, very logical and methodical way of being, and also very uh, flattened or very restricted emotional expression. That's also important here. Basically, inability to accept oneself, chronic emotional frustration, basically coping. That's that's how we can say it. And last trait would be discipline, hardworking and overly serious. With Enneagram 2, Naranjo did link it to a uh, histronic personality disorder and I would, uh, obviously it makes sense. There is also some narcissism and you can maybe make a case for a grandiose narcissism, maybe grandiose variation of narcissistic personality disorder for social 2, for example. That could be something that will happen because I would uh, associate maybe HPD more with social 2, maybe uh, self-preservation 2 rather than social 2, but we'll see. So let's look at some of the traits of HPD which would be uncomfortable when not in the center of attention, seductive or provocative behavior, shifting in very shallow emotions, uses appearance to draw attention, impressionistic and vague speech, dramatic or exaggerated emotions. I can't even fucking speak English and I don't give a fuck. We're moving forward. Considers relationships as more intimate than they truly are. Lastly would be manipulativeness. Now, funnily enough, those who don't know much about HPD, it's by many psychologists considered to be really one of the best uh, personality disorders to have because it does not inhibit your social ability, which most of those personality disor uh, disorders do. That's the big flaw with them. It makes you a very extroverted individual, very charismatic and charming. And many of those people with that diagnosis go far in life. Many celebrities, they can become celebrities, actors, whatever. What overlaps within Enneagram 2? Pride. Imaginary exaltation, exaltation of self-worth and attractiveness. Demanding privileges. Boasting. Needing to be the center of attention and playing the part of the princes. Tessively romantic orientation. Need to confirm an inflated sense of worth. Need to regard oneself as special. That is satisfied through receiving law. Very touchy and feely. Subtle intolerance of limits. Very invasive. Over involved in relationships. Possessive and seductive. Hedonism. Which is wishing for pleasure. Often substitutes for pleasure. Equate being loved to being pleased. 
very affectionate, tender, emotional, very temperamental when not indulge or not made uh, feel loved or pampered. Okay, uh, very wants attention, propensity towards to be frustrated, pretendingly content and animated, seductiveness, which would be highly interested in being attractive, affectionate, warm, supportive, empathic, erotically or socially seductive. Right, often seems superficial fickle or even unstable uh, theatrical love displays by a failure to deliver impressionable emotionality now many people do believe that enneagram 4 is by far the most emotional uh, type but it's actually enneagram 2 so enneagram 2 would be extremely emotional but this emotionality within enneagram 2 would be considered anti-intellectual then we have enneagram 3 which if, as far as i remember Naranjo didn't really link it to anything specific, right? Probably, I would see. I expected narcissism, narcissistic personality disorder, but from what I've read, I don't really recall it being there. But if I'm wrong, correct me in the comment section. Either way, let's look at some of the NPD traits and let's see if it can fit someone who is a three. It would be unreasonably high sense of self-importance and requiring constant excessive admiration. Expect to be recognized as a superior, okay? make achievements and talents seem bigger than they are so very promoting personality bragging about how much they did and often exaggerating those achievements or those talents uh, then we have preoccupied with fantasies of success power brilliance beauty or even the perfect mate so again three v circle jerker here we see it. very critical and can look down on people they feel are not as important Take advantage of others to get what they want, okay? Uh, envious of others and believe others envy them. Bragging, acting arrogant and coming across as conceited. Unable or unwilling to take other people's feelings into consideration. First trait of Anagram 3 would be attention, need and vanity. Basically, calvitation of appearance in order to be seen, heard or appreciated. Uh, chronic frustration from the need to be for others believe that they may not be loved without accomplishments or attractiveness fear of failure perfectionism of form so basically at its core enneagram 3 is a type that does need that fuel to keep going right it's to to gain that sense of worthiness it has to be acquired through external means salvation of sexual attractiveness such as self-beautification conservation of sexual attractiveness formalistic beauty yet very emotionally hollow okay next the seat and image manipulation takes on different appearances to satisfy the thirst to be confusion between extrinsic validation and intrinsic value what is seen by others becomes what they perceive as reality and very skilled in presentation many people with npd believe it's logical to them that to be valuable you do need to have those achievements to be valuable you need to show that you are actually lovable then we got achieving orientation very practical logical calculating competitive bluffing self-promoting deceptive right okay makes sense and lastly superficiality as being a trait lacking access to the depth of their feelings not knowing who they are beyond their tangible characteristics and roles not knowing what they want beyond pleasing others and being effective. So this, in my opinion, there is quite a strong correlation between narcissistic personality disorder and Enneagram 3. Let's look at some of the BPD traits that you can find online and uh, let's see if it fits Enneagram 4. An intense fear of abandonment, uh -huh, even going to extreme measures to avoid real or imagined separation or rejection. Okay, this you know, fear of abandonment, this, this can be common in a few types, but also in Enneagram 4. A, pat a pattern of unstable, intense relationships, such as idealizing someone one moment, and then suddenly believing that the person doesn't care enough or is cruel. Rapid changes in self-identity and self-image that include shifting goals and values and seeing yourself as bad or as if you don't exist at all. So again, shitty and very poor self-regulated image. Ongoing feelings of emptiness, inappropriate or intense anger, such as frequently losing your temper, being sarcastic or bitter, or having physical fights. Now we look at some of the Enneagram 4 traits. First would be envy, which is love hunger, guilty and controlled greed over desiring self-frustration, pursuit of the extraordinary and intense dissatisfaction with the ordinary extreme neediness but disliking neediness, poor self-image, uh, feeling inadequate, 
prone to shame, feeling unintelligent, ugly, repulsive, rotten, poisonous, right? Unfair self-criticism, very clingy, very demanding, biting, dependent, and over-attached. Focus on suffering, which might manifest such as may use pain as revenge, okay? Unconscious hope of obtaining love through suffering. Sensitive, intense, passionate, romantic, suffer from deep loneliness, victimization, and purposely even making bad decisions and painful choices. So that's some of the things that might happen with this type. Crave love, clinging to frustrating relationships to postpone separation, motivational inability to care properly, properly for themselves. I've also noticed that many seven course sexual sevens also showcase many of the BPD traits, even though their core trait structure doesn't really seem like it. And we have schizoid personality disorder. Now, some schizoid traits want to be alone and do activities alone, does not want to enjoy or, you know, care for close relationships, little desire, if any, for sexual relationship, a full-blown motherfucking incel, takes pleasure in few activities or if any. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this trait is considered it's called anhedonia or something something like that right then we have it f find it hard to express your emotions and to react may like humor or not be interested in others may appear cold to other people may like the drive that makes you want to reach goals and does not react to praise or criticism from others so it's very detached withdrawing cold uh, inexpressive and also lacking in that effect right so Let's look into Enneagram 5 and see how it compares. So first trait I would overlap would be retentiveness, not generous in terms of money, time, energy, insensitive to the needs of other people, hold on to their ongoing mental content, not open to environmental stimulation. Then we have pathological detachment, aloof, loner, loner who does not feel lonely, which is basically schizoid, minimization of one's needs, schizoid, inhibition and fear of expressing anger. And this trait does capture a lot of the schizoid tendencies, not, a v not an emotional type. Fear of engulfment, which is fear and avoidance of being swallowed by others. Fear of dependency, sensitive to interference or interruptions. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, easy peasy. Feelinglessness, which is lost awareness of feelings, indifferent, cold, unempathetic, apathetic, diminished capacity to feel pleasure, which is anhedonia. Then we have anagram six which would be hmm, obsessive compulsive disorder i guess that's what would, we would uh, correlate to and paranoid personality disorder now with obsessive it's basically just circular jerking right checking double checking having intrusive thoughts there is not as much complication there but i don't think even around who linked it to anything like that but then i looked into paranoid personality disorder which probably does a uh, fit a lot of the specifically probably so6 or sexual six traits doubt the commitment loyalty and trustworthiness of other people believing others are exploiting or deceiving them be reluctant to confide in others or reveal personal information because they're afraid that the information will be used against them again paranoiac motherfucking cunts be unforgiving and hold grudges sure be hypersensitive and take criticism poorly peak third will peak I'm gonna vomit. I'm joking. Read hidden meanings in the innocent remarks or casual looks of others. Persistent suspicions without justified reason that their spouse or romantic partners are being unfaithful. Cold and distant in their relationships with others and might become controlling and jealous to avoid being betrayed. Then we have not see their own problems or conflicts, believing they're always right, which, which sounds so sexual sex. And lastly, be hostile, stubborn, and argumentative. So in my opinion, I just read this shit. This is peak LSI section 6. Now let's look into the anagram 6 if we can find something there. First would be fear, cowardice, and anxiety is the core trait. So imagined dangers, fear of change, making mistakes, the unknown, letting go, hostility, trickery, right? Being unable to cope. Prone to compulsive double checking, okay? Struggle in un unstructured situations and fear future consequences. So this is interesting. So some of this... I would not be surprised if many L many LII SO6 or many LSI SO6 or even Sexual 6 can also have OCPD because I see overlap between some of the traits. Over alert hyper intentionality. What the fuck is that word? Suspicious, over cautious disposition, excessive deliberation for what other for what to others is a spontaneous choice. 
rational choices or look out for hidden meanings. That fits. Now, ba ba ba, compete with authority, guilt, skeptical, critical, argumentative, paranoid, insecurity. That's the social six trait. Pugnacy. Pugnacity. What the fuck, man? Oh, no, no, no. Pugnacity is mainly sexual six. My bad, guys. Accusation of self and others. Guilt elevated through projection, creation of outside enemies, and warmth, rigidity, pugnacity. pugnacity. Self protective, feel prosecuted, and persecute other people. Then we have Enneagram 7. We can kind of sit down and speculate what to associate this Enneagram with. But um, Naranjo didn't really specify anything. He did say narcissistic personality, but. I'm not sure if he meant clinical narcissistic personality disorder or simply narcissism, not in the clinical sense. I could see sexual sevens who have BPD uh, and probably also struggle with mood disorders. Then we have anagram eight, which would be antisocial personality disorder. And let's look at some of the ASPD traits. Telling lies to take advantage of others, not being sensitive or respectful towards others, using charm or wit to manipulate for personal gain or even pleasure, having a sense of superiority and being extremely opinionated, having problems with the law, basically criminal behavior, hostile, aggressive, violent, or threatening to others, feeling no guilt about harming other people, being impulsive or incapable of planning ahead. The core trait would be lust, favor of hedonism, needing stimulation, excitement, basically propensity towards boredom, which is very uh, common in uh, ASPD personalities, you know, very common. They they tend to be extremely bored, struggle with boredom. Very impatient, impulsive, pleasure and fighting for pleasure. Then we have punitiveness, which is sadistic, exploitative, hostile, blunt, sarcastic, intimidating, frustrating, eh, quick to retaliate, to get over anger, take justice into their own hands and harden themselves against life. So this fits. Then we have dominance, which is arrogant, power-seeking, need for triumph, put other people down, competitive, act superior, believe it doesn't pay to be weak, insensitivity, tough, confrontational, ruthless, callousness, unsentimental, realistic, direct, disdain for fear and sensitivity, which is, by the way, also a trait found in antisocial personality disorder. Very uh, just disdain for weakness and fear. An exaggerated risk taken is also part of this insensitivity tra trait, which also fits perfectly with ASPD. Then we have conning and cynicism, which is skeptical of virtue, distrust in other people's motives, more blatantly deceptive than Enneagram 7, assertively bargain. Exhibitionism, which is narcissism, and it's going to be entertaining, very witty, often charming, con consciously uses seductiveness or bragging to gain or influence elevate status to buy out others to make up for unaccountability violence or invasiveness so then we have autonomy basically reject dependency self-reliant because they don't they tend to see others as potential competitors or targets of exploitation i'm gonna vomit again ah, i nearly vomited again okay i was trying to fucking read about anagram 9 and genuinely read that shit and know what the fuck to link it to Part of me was like, what the fuck? Okay, I guess anhedonia being a big part of it. And what? Depression? I looked at shit and I was like, that must be motherfucking depression. So that I that's beyond me. If you guys know which condition that really, really, really fits it well, link down below. Now, this is it, guys. Now, remember, as I said before, just because you are Enneagram X, Y, and Z doesn't, need, doesn't mean that you have to be diagnosed with this fucking disorder, this condition, this mental health thing. It does not matter at all. It's simply an extreme manifestation of your personality. That's what it is. So don't be sweaty. 